If you missed game number one of the 2024 World Series between the Yankees and the Dodgers, I got you guys. And to be honest with you, the first four innings, you didn't miss much because Jack Flaherty and Garrett Cole, they weren't missing much. Well, there was this Freddie Freeman double, triple thing because Alex Verdugo, maybe he stumbled, he got his feet stuck in the grass, and then he started blowing a bubble and looking back as he was chasing after it. Kids do not do that. So I guess the only people missing things were Alex Verdugo and the umpire who nearly blew 15 calls. Well, rant about that after the recap. Teoscar Hernandez, he smoked a ball straight to Anthony Volpe, so Garrett is out that jam. Colden tossed a nasty, nasty curveball to get Otani to chase, so that's three shutout innings for both starters, Jack Flaherty and Garrett Cole. Now, each team, they traded some web gems. Rizzo, he made a sick over-the-shoulder basket catch. And then Max Muncy, that funky Muncy, he picked it like a first baseman over there at the hot corner, so five scoreless for Jack Flaherty, and that's kind of when the defense crumbled for both teams. Juan Soto, I don't know if this was like a small stutter step. He thought he was going to get there. Then he knew I'm not going to get there. So he slowed down, but then kind of sped up. He's not Fernando Tatis Jr. out there. He's not going to win a platinum glove. Maybe he should have just taken a deeper angle to it and try to cut it off. Instead, Enrique Hernandez gets a triple. Will Smith, he did his job. He put the ball in play. Soto, he's in the gold glove conversations because of how good his arm was this year. Not a terrible throw at all, but just not enough juice behind it. So it's one nothing Dodgers. The only run allowed by Garrett Cole all night long. Juan Soto, that's a single. He's trying to rally the troops. In comes Aaron Judge and give him the golden sombrero. His third strikeout of the game. Giancarlo Stanton, he keeps having to pick up the pieces for Judge. Judge is kind of becoming the hitter version of Clayton Kershaw, which makes me very sad to say. We'll talk about his struggles in the postseason after the recap. That's 17 playoff home runs for Stanton, who has a 1.019 OPS in October. Flaherty's day is done. Cole is not, and Jazz really saved him at the hot corner. He snatched a liner from Mookie Betts. Eric Cole Cole ended up going six shutout. He tried to go seven, but he was taken out after this leadoff single to Teoscar Hernandez. He was taken out after 88 pitches. Derek Jeter had a problem with that. Now, it's not like everything just fell apart in that inning. Clay Holmes and Tommy Canley got the final three outs in the seventh inning, but maybe sitting on the bench messed with Tommy Canley's timing because this is a rocket double to Shohei Otani. He missed the home run by maybe a foot or two. Glaber, he then missed the scoop. He's not going to get Otani on the tag, so leave the bag. Go to the baseball. Sometimes Major League Baseball players, they're so good at scooping that they can get scoop happy. Go to the ball and catch it on the fly. Otani's on third now. Luke Weaver, we call him Mariano Rivera. As opposing hitters have kind of been hunting that changeup and he left it up a little too high. Mookie was looking for it and that is a game tying sack fly show. He scores easy. Now Glaber had a six swing of his own. He lasered a almost painted 99 fastball out the hand of Michael Kopek, but a fan interfered. He snagged it over the wall so it's called fan interference. That is an automatic double and that fan got kicked out. What a waste of money and he missed one of the best comebacks in World Series history. We'll talk about that in a second. The Dodgers intentionally walked Juan Soto to get to judge that's the second time this playoffs that Soto has been intentionally walked so they could get to Aaron Judge which doesn't make sense but he dropped his PCI again he missed it again so we go to extras wait actually the bottom of the ninth Verdugo made his first of two sick web gems so free baseball it is Jazz he made some history in extra innings he secured his second base of the game he then stole two bases, so he became the sixth player ever with two base hits and three stolen bases in a World Series game. Hall of Famers Lou Brock and Honus, I don't want to say Honus, I say Honus, maybe I'm saying it wrong, but Lou Brock and Honus Wagner, they're on that list, so very rare company. Volpe, this could be two, but Edmund bobbled it. Rizzo, he's out, Jazz scores. Tommy Edmond, he's going to try and make up for it, though. After Gavin Lux took a walk against Jake Cousins, Tommy Edmond, he was blessed. Oswaldo Cabrera, he came in as a pinch runner for Glaber, and we've all done this in MLB The Show. You hit the dive button too early, and you dive over the ball. He overdove it. I'm using that as a real sentence today. Here comes Nestor Cortez. He has not pitched in 37 days, but Aaron Boone swears he's been throwing really well in simulated games. He did not go with Tim Hill, who has been electric, almost unhittable for the Yankees all season long. And that's a 92 meatball to Otani, and Otani just straight up missed it. And it's crazy that after the game, Nestor said that he located that pitch well. Verdugo just bailed him out with the grab and took the bat out of Otani's hand. They also took the bat out of Mookie's hands, but that was on purpose. So you walk one MVP to get to another. 
Freddie's up with the bases loaded and lefty lefty. I think he's hitting over 600 in those situations over the last two seasons. To me, that's Aaron Boone's fault. I know hindsight is 2020, and Stephen Vogt even had a motivational speech after that ALCS that, you know, you learn the lesson, you leave the event. At the time, you did what you thought was right, and maybe there's some truth in that. But Freddie, he smokes the walk-off Grand Slam, a moment straight out of everyone's backyards when you're a kid. Bottom of the ninth, World Series, bases loaded. And by the way, Freddie was on a bum ankle, right? So this reminded me a lot of Kurt Gibson's walk-off home run. Kurt Gibson hit his walk-off home run at 8.37 p.m. Freddie Freeman, 8.37 p.m. That was directly from the baseball gods. That's better than any Hollywood script. You cannot make that up. Kirk and Freddie both walk off home runs on one leg at 8.37 p.m. How is that even possible? So those were all the highlights from game one. Now we have some big questions to answer. You guys have to help me out with these. First and foremost, who let that guy umpire behind the dish? Carlos Torres, like nothing against him personally, but objectively speaking, he wasn't even top 30 in accuracy for calling balls and strikes this year. Look at some of these misses. Why do we not have inning to inning scorecards for these guys? You're telling me that it's too hard that during a commercial break, an umpire can't scoot away to some sort of person who's tracking in game. Hey, you're calling the outside pitches a little bit too often. Yeah, you're being consistent, but tighten up the zone. It seems like there's no accountability in that the umpires union is so much stronger than we actually think like they have so much power that's why angel hernandez had a job for so long and he had to retire on his own so that's a big question why was carlos torres behind the dish when he's not a very good umpire in terms of calling balls and strikes aaron boone will talk about why he chose to go with nestor cortez over tim hill and even joe girardi spoke on the matter and nestor had not pitched since september 18th why did you like him in that 10th inning just like the matchup um the reality is he's been throwing the ball really well the last few weeks as he's gotten ready for this. <clears throat> I knew with one out there, it'd be tough to double up Shohei if, if Tim Hill gets him on the ground and then Mookie behind him is a tough matchup there. So felt convicted with, with Nestor in that spot. But obviously Tim Hill has been really good in the playoffs and is obviously sharper than probably Nestor Cortez. So that's the explanation from Aaron Boone. He thought that Tim Hill did not have a great chance at turning a double play against Otani. So he went with Nestor Cortez. Joe Girardi, he uh, questioned that decision. Not only did Aaron Boone bring in Nestor Cortez, and people questioned that, but also taking out Garrett Cole with 88 pitches. Derek Jeter, the captain, he questioned that decision as well. But we were talking about when we, when we were playing the Mets in 2000, Al Leiter pitched game six. He threw 140-something pitches. Garrett Cole was dominating this game. He was dominating the game. Yeah. And if you take him out after 88 pitches for I don't know what reason, it's a domino effect on not only this game tonight, tomorrow's game and the rest of the series Preach. so here's another decision that Aaron Boone is going to have to make do you move Aaron Judge down in the lineup well he's already said out loud that is never going to happen but we do have to face the facts that in the playoffs already between the Guardians and the Dodgers series the opposing team has chosen to intentionally walk Juan Soto twice already to get to Aaron Judge and the lineup shaping is just not very good right now because you go Glaber, Soto, Judge, Stanton. They're just walking Soto to get to a bunch of righties and then at the bottom of the lineup they're intentionally walking Anthony Volpe to get to a lot of lefties. It makes no sense right now but if we're being honest Aaron Judge has to pick it up. Over his last 31 playoff games he's batting I can't believe that this is a real stat he's batting like 150 with a 40% strikeout rate. He's quite literally hitting like Yankees Joey Gallo. Just to put it into perspective, those are essentially Joey Gallo's numbers as a Yankee in the outfield, batting like 150, 160, striking out 40% of the time with a home run here and there. 31 games with a sub 600 OPS as the superstar of your team, the face of the franchise, maybe the face of the league, not named Otani. He's got to turn it around, and there is a precedent. Barry Bonds, obviously, people consider him the greatest hitter of all time. He was pathetic, useless in his early career as a postseason hitter with the Pirates and even his first few series as a giant. Then he started taking a balanced breakfast. I don't know if that was the key change, but his first 20 ish games, really bad. His next 20 ish games, he was really, really good. Hit over 330 with an almost 1500 OPS. So the precedent has been set. There is time for a judge to turn it around, but time is a ticket.